Hi, parents. So this video is to talk a little bit about ST Math. Uh, ST Math is a program uh, purchased by the district, which uh, they've made available to all the kids. And it's a uh, ST st uh, stands for spatial temporal math, meaning that the types of activities that the kids will engage in vary nonverbal. In fact, there's hardly any writing at all. It's all about trying to have the kids make connections with uh, spatial reasoning, seeing things, and just temporal reasoning, you know, seeing things happen in action. Um, and you'll see what I mean in just a sec. Now, uh, some instructions on how to get in. First off, uh, you, your kids will have to go to their Clever portal. Uh, Clever is just a program the district uses to organize all the different applications the kids can use. Uh, I've, in, I've included the web address in this presentation. The kids will log in with their user, uh, username and password that the district gave them, and they'll end up here. Uh, and I'm sorry, you can't see the whose screen. I'm trying to hide the student's name who's, whose account I'm using. Uh, now, there's all sorts of things here. There's teacher pages and online platforms. But the one you're looking for is this little penguin guy. This is Gigi. Gigi is the star of ST Math, and uh, your kids will get very accustomed to him. So I'm going to open up ST Math. And this is an account that's never been used, so you can see it from the get-go. So where you start off with is just this page. And you'll see there are no written instructions. That's on purpose. They want the kids just to be able to click on things, try things out, make mistakes, and then learn from them. And so in terms of language, in terms of verbal or written work, we don't have to worry about that. It's more about the visual and the tempor uh, temporal reason. Okay, so you can click around, certain things are grayed out, click on stuff, and eventually something might work. So in this case, my journey, there's a little map. Gigi goes walking across. And so this is the pre-quiz. I'm not gonna take it because I don't wanna mess up the student's uh, account in case they wanna use it. But basically the pre-quiz is a way for your kids to assess where they're at currently. Because the program will, it will modify itself based on the user. So based on how they do on this pre-quiz and how confident they feel about their work, uh, the program will set up a list of activities for them to do, all right? And so there'll be activities that, you know, are specifically suited to them. All right, so here's a, a demo version. This is not a real student, so I'm not gonna worry about the name, um, but this is an activity that was recommended to this particular student based on how they did. Uh, and this is in the fifth grade to eighth grade range. So again, no written instructions, just a matter of clicking on things and trying things out. Now, what I see here is seven openings, so I'm going to try clicking seven and see what happens. I hit the play button, and you can see what happens here. And then Gigi's able, Gigi's able to cross. So now it continues. Now, you'll notice here it's changed a little bit, and you might try, oh, there's six here, so I'm going to click six, but then it wants another number, so I'll just click another one just to try. And this is unintentional. This is so kids can work through trial and error and learn. And that it's okay to make a mistake. It's no big deal. You make a mistake, you revise your thinking, and you start again. All right, so it looks like I can't have the blocks sticking out. So what I need to do is I need to put in four blocks here and then two blocks here. Now, you might be saying to yourself, God, isn't this kind of simplistic for fifth to eighth grade? But that's because there's, there's an intention here that this understanding and this visual temporal representation of things will eventually build. And if I keep going, I'll kind of fast forward through this. But what you'll see is this actually gets into, it gets into distributive property, which is a more complex uh, concept. So again, I messed up because I didn't pay attention. They were multiplying here. So I'm going to do five times, oops. Five times three. And you can see now that the, the problem's changed a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward to some of the later ones. All right, so here you can see we're kind of moving forward. It's gotten a lot more complicated. And, but at this point, the kids have built up to it. There are activities in between these. And so this gets into order of operations, it gets into distributive property, but it makes a connection between the visual temporal aspect of things and the algebraic symbology. So that way the math is just not what we call naked numbers. There, there's a connection that the kids can make between what Gigi does and what the picture shows and what's actually going on up here. 
Okay, so by the time they get here, what they hopefully will have figured out is what's going on is we've got something times and then this grouping. And when you look down here, I've got the same pattern repeated three times. Those are the three groups. So here I would type in three. And in each of these groups, there's two plus four. So two plus four. And you can see the animation connect the algebraic representation to the visual. And so this is giving kids an understanding of what distributive property is all about. It's about order of operations. And we go from very simplistic, just fill in the hole to some very complex mathematical ideas. Let's try one more. So this one is asking, okay, based on what we see here, which is the better representation? A times B plus some amount C, or is it A times some large amount B plus C? Well, I think it's this one because the A would be the three different groups and the group in the parentheses is the B, which is the two and the C, which is the three. And again, the kids build up to this. Okay, so this is a little bit about what ST math is all about. It's about a way to, for kids to connect the visual with with the mathematical representation, all right? So for those kids that had never like, maybe they've had a tough time with integers and but never had a visual model to go with it. They've never understood equations, but it's because they've never had a visual model to go with it. This might be the way to go, all right? And so I've given the log instructions. Once again, the, the website is in the presentation and your kids just use their district ID and password to get in.